Hey guys, so now that I've introduced what a vector is and how it's different from a scalar in that it has direction, we're going to look into how to do math with vectors, which is something that's going to show up in several chapters in this, in this course, so you have to be good at it. So let's jump right into it. All right, so because vectors have direction, doing math with them is not as straightforward as scalars, right? So for example, if you're adding two scalars, 10 kilograms plus 20 kilograms, that's just 30 kilograms. In fact, when you learn in first grade that 1 plus 1 is 2, that was scalar addition, right? They just didn't call it that because little kids would run. Um, but to add vectors, it's a little bit different. And I already kind of mentioned this um, earlier. If you move 3 to the right and 4 up, so let me draw this real quick here. If you move 3 to the right and then you move 4 up, your displacement is not 3 plus 4 is 7, but it's actually 5 because you're supposed to use the Pythagorean theorem here because displacement is the shortest line from beginning to end. So it's a little bit different, okay? In fact, because displacement is a vector, we're going to work through a lot of displacement problems, and those are the examples I'm going to use to sort of illustrate how vectors work. So every time you think of vectors, think of displacement, um, and we're just going to be walking around in different paths and seeing how that stuff works, okay? So vectors can be added, they can be combined. This is basically vector addition right here, 3 and 4. I walk 3 plus 4 going up. We're adding them. And they can be added either graphically, visually, right, or algebraically, which just means with just numbers rather than with a graph. Um, graphically is more visual, obviously, but algebraically could be faster, right? It's usually faster. Um, we're going to do a lot of graphical stuff first. I'm going to show you the algebra way of doing it. Um, so we're going to begin playing with them graphically. And vectors are represented as arrows. So vectors are just basically arrows, and they're going to go in different directions, and it's going to form a bunch of triangles. So you're just going to be using a lot of trig to solve these problems. Um, and we're going to add these arrows using a method called tip to tail. Tip to tail. And the idea is that the tip of one vector will go in the tail of the other. So if I'm adding these, the tip of the first guy goes on the tail of the second guy. And you can kind of keep doing this tip to tail. There's a professor of that I won't name, um, but that instead of calling it tip to tail, he calls it um, ass to face. Um, so I thought that was kind of funny, right? So the, I guess the ass of the vector on the face of the vector. Um, so maybe you remember it that way, whatever works. Um, so example one, let's do an example here. For each of the following, draw your displacement vectors and calculate your total displacement. So you walk three to the right, and then you walk four to the right. This one's really simple. You walk three to the right. I'm going to call this A equals three. And then I'm going to tip the tail here. Then you walk four to the right a little longer, B equals four. So what is your total displacement? Well, if this is A and B, I'm going to say that C is the total displacement. And this is what C looks like. And C is obviously seven, right? I mentioned how when you're combining these, because you walked A, B, C, whatever, it's vector addition. So I can write that C equals A plus B. It's a combination of both paths, right? Now, these guys here are vectors because they are arrows that have direction. So I can put a little arrow on top, and this is called vector notation. This little arrow right here tells us that this is a vector. Therefore, you, you have to be careful when you add them. Here, they happen to be sitting in the same axis, so I can just combine them. Um, so since they both they all sit in the same axis, I can combine them, and I can just do that. I can show you that C is A is three plus B is four, so the answer is seven. This is the graphical way of doing it, um, and this is the algebraically uh, algebraic way of doing it. Let's do one now. We're going up and down, so we're going three up. I'm going to call this A equals three. And then from here, we're going to go make this down like this. 4. 4 is obviously longer, so it's going to be a little longer line. B equals 4. Displacement is an arrow from the very beginning to the very end. I'm going to make that a different color. The very beginning is here. The very end is here. That is your displacement. That is your C. If I went 3 up and 4 down, obviously this C has a length of 1. 
okay? But there's a few details here that I have to talk about. C is still the combination of A plus B. You always add them up irrespective of the direction you go. Now, what is different is the fact that when you plug this in, A is going up, so A is positive. But B is going down, and B is therefore negative 4. Negatives in physics represent direction, right? That's all they do. So we're going to put this as a negative, and that's because the standard, the standard um, convention is that going up is positive and going to the right is positive. This could change, but that's the standard, okay? And we usually represent it by drawing a little diagram like this to show that we're using the direction of positive to be up and to the right. So if you do this, you get a negative 1, which should make sense. This one here is the magnitude, the size of that vector, and this negative here is the direction. If going up is positive, this negative tells us that this thing is going down, and it is in fact going down. So I'm going to put a little, a little negative in front of the 1 right there. I put a negative in front of the 4 as well, and that's the complete answer. So that is the easiest um, way to add vectors, the easiest situation to add vectors if they're both in the x or both in the y axis. So vectors in the same axis, both x, both y, are just added like you would add any numbers. So 3 plus 4. And then here, I just had to be careful with the signs. Just be careful with signs um, that have to do with direction. Now, if they lie on different axes, right? So if one of them is in the x-axis, and the other one's on the y-axis, we're going to use trigonometry, trig, to add them, to combine these vectors. Let me show you. So you walk 3 to the right and 4 up. So 3 to the right, 4 up. A equals 3. And then you walk 4 up. B equals 4. And your displacement is from here to here, C. And to find its magnitude and direction, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem and SOHCAHTOA. I'll show you that just now. So the magnitude of vector C, C is a vector, so I can do that, is given by this notation. This is the magnitude of a vector notation. You put the absolute value bars around it, and it's Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, it's just A squared plus b squared. And if I plug in these numbers, 3 squared plus 4 squared, I get 5. 3, 4, 5 triangle. Make this easy. Um, and then this angle here, remember direction is the angle theta. Now to do this, we're going to have to use SOHCAHTOA. So we're going to just briefly give you a review of that. I'm going to do a lot more on this stuff a little later. Uh, but for now, it suffices to show you just this. So katoa. Typically in this situation, I already know that this is a 5, but in the beginning I was only given a 4 and a 3. The 4 is the opposite, the 3 is the adjacent, right? Opposite and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to use toa. Toa tells us, just as a reminder, toa is supposed to remind you that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. That's what it says, right? But I don't want the tangent of theta, I want theta. So I need to get theta out of there. I gotta get the tangent out of there so theta is by itself. And the way to do that is to apply the arc tangent function to both sides. So this is going to be theta equals the arc tangent of opposite over adjacent. Now I want to take one step further and tell you that the opposite is almost always, or basically always going to be your y value, and your adjacent will be your x value. So it's opposite over adjacent, but I want you to remember it as y over x, okay? So this is how you find the magnitude of a vector, and to find the theta of a vector, it is the arc tangent of y over x. Those are really important got to just memorize those. And this is the arc tangent of the y value is 4, the x value is 3. So you plug this in the calculator, make sure your calculator, the mode is in degrees. And the answer will be 53 degrees. Cool. So those are 
the two answers. This process we call vector composition. The name doesn't matter as much as knowing how to do it, but that's what it's called, and it's called that because the X and Y components are being merged. This is called the X component of the vector, and this is called the Y component of the vector. I like to think of these as the legs of the vector, right? So they're merged to form a two-dimensional vector. What I mean by two-dimensional is that it's going at an angle like that, right? So that's, that's actually what I mean there. So that has an angle, right? It doesn't sit flat in the X or flat in the Y. It goes at an angle. Cool. So one last point, forces are also vectors. Forces also have direction. So if you have multiple forces acting on an object, we can use the same process we just talked about to find what's called the net force, okay? And what is the net force? The net force is an equivalent force. Um, let's say you have an object that's being pulled by three forces, F1, F2, F3. The net force is one force that could take the place of all of those. And I could say that that one force produces the same effect. Well, you can see that. That one force produces the same effect as all of the other forces combined. That's what that is. Net force, we're going to do some of that stuff later. Okay? So we can use the addition of vectors just like I've shown you to figure out the net force. So box sits in an XY plane. Draw an XY plane. Here's our little box. And you pull on it with a force of 6 towards the X. So this is U, I'm going to call this A equals 6. And then your friend pulls on it with a force uh, of 8 towards the Y. So this is B equals 8. Okay? Actually, let me write this over here. Um, B equals 8. Now, which way would you expect this force, the net force to be? Or if this box was moving, which way would you imagine that the box would move? You'd probably imagine the box moves somewhere in this direction, right? And you can actually figure this out exactly by redrawing this, okay? I can put one force at a time. I can put A equals 6. And then using tip to tail, I can keep connecting these forces, right? B equals 8. And this right here, just like it was with your displacement, is your net force, okay? I could have drawn this over here like, like this, made a little box, and shown you that the net force goes this way. Um, these two pictures are the same. The only difference is that I move the 8 from over here to over here to make a little triangle. That's all it is. It looks a little, a little bit more like a triangle. There's a theta there. Now we want to find the magnitude and direction. Magnitude of the net force, remember magnitude of a vector is the vector with um, absolute value signs around it. And then it's just the square root of its components. These two guys are components. So 6 squared plus 8 squared. If you do this carefully in your calculator, you get a 10. Forces are measured in newtons, so this is 10 newtons. The angle, the angle is always going to be there against the x-axis. We'll talk about that more later. Is the arc tangent of, remember, y over x. The y value here is 8, and the x value is 6. So the answer here is 53 as well. All right, so these are the two answers. And that's it for this one.